I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1869 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there. As told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about another tremendous representative of the great Vietnam veteran generation, one as great as any that ever heeded the call of duty from its country. The Vietnam veteran I'm going to be telling you about in this episode is Richard Shoyen. Richard, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. If not, I'm going to apologize right up front. Richard was a Navy F-4 pilot. He flew over there in Vietnam in the later years of that war. He flew off an aircraft carrier operating over Vietnam in 1972. He was participating in those linebacker operations where they were trying to get the North Vietnamese to come to the peace talks table in Paris and agree on something. Anything, just so we could get out of there. He was probably there when that solar storm blew up all those mines in Haiphong Harbor. You may or may not remember back in episode 1319 of this podcast, I talked about the big solar storm that occurred in 1972. If you remember correctly, the U.S. had placed 11,000 mines in the Haiphong Harbor trying to force the North Vietnamese to come to an agreement over in Paris so we could get out of there. Strange thing happened. A solar storm on the sun occurred. It affected thousands of those mines that we had put in Haiphong Harbor because they were magnetic mines. All of a sudden, it seemed like the ocean began to explode because these mines were going off. That's because of something that happened on the sun. I get a kick out of all these doom and gloom climate change people thinking we can just go out and turn on a switch and change the weather. I got news for them. The weather on the earth is controlled by factors far more gigantic and titanic than anything people here on earth can do. People here on earth do have an obligation to keep the place clean, keep the air as clean as possible. Pick up the trash. But as far as changing our lives because of weather changes, that's beyond our capabilities. Just like that solar storm demonstrated back in 1972 when something that happened on the sun set off thousands of magnetic mines in Haiphong Harbor. Enough about that. Let's get back to Richard Shoyan's story. It's a very interesting story because it verifies what I always say about the Vietnam veteran generation. Members of that generation stepped forward to serve their country over in Vietnam, which was not the most pleasant experience for most. After the war, despite a hostile reception by anti-war proponents, the vast majority of those veterans continued serving their country in a wide array of pursuits. Richard Shoyan is another example of that generation and how they serve their country. Richard was originally from Texas, but he settled down out in the great state of Montana. Recently, they wrote a story about Richard in a series called Stories of Honor. Top Gun Vietnam Navy pilot flew 107 combat missions. This story was provided by Kurt Sinesse. It appeared in the independent record of Helena, Montana. Kurt did a great job describing Richard's career in and out of the military. I am sharing this story just to inspire you 
about the greatness of Americans. Let's take a look. Dateline, Helena, Montana. As an F-4 Phantom II jet fighter pilot during the Vietnam War in the early 1970s, Navy Lieutenant Richard Shoyan flew 107 combat missions and logged over 700 flight hours, mainly over the deadly skies of North Vietnam. He survived 250 carrier landings, three near mid-air collisions, and one dual engine failure at 50 feet above the deck. And there was also the time he found himself in a shooting gallery over a large Vietnam city due to a typo by the Red Crown controller. I think if that would have happened to me, when I got back, I would have searched out that controller who made that typo and let him know what I thought about his typo error. Continuing. Richard was born in Houston, Texas and graduated high school there in 1964. After attaining his bachelor's degree in math and engineering at Lamar University, he enrolled in graduate school at the University of Texas. But he soon saw the light. He dropped out and started Naval Aviation OCS at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. In May 1969, he was a commissioned ensign in the Navy Reserves. Graduating near the top of his class, he was assigned to the Radar Intercept Officer Training, the F-4 Phantom II. After RIO training at NAS Glencoe in South Georgia, Schoen reported to Fighter Training Squadron Replacement Air Group at NAS Oceana, Virginia. He then spent a 30-day deployment in the Caribbean on the USS Kennedy. More in-depth training fully qualified Shoyan in December of 1970, being assigned to Fighter Squadron 74. Aboard the USS Forrestal and given the call sign Shadow, Lieutenant J.G. Shoyan deployed for a Mediterranean cruise with the assignment of guarding the fleet from the Soviets and taking part in joint exercises with our allies. One day the order came to launch the alert F-4s. Ops had identified five inbound bogeys, he recounted in his memoirs, The Bucket List, as a pilot. His name was Jim, and I were preparing for launch. Our wingman reported engine trouble and had to abort. In what surprise, Jim and I, we located, identified, intercepted, and defeated in air combat all five aircraft in a matter of a few minutes. It is not specified in this story if that was a real alert or a practice alert since they were on a training cruise. Continuing. His actions during the successful one-on-five mission earned Shoyan a promotion to NAS Oceana Squadron's RIO Training Officer and Electronic Warfare Officer. I guess that's good. In addition, he became among the top 3% selected for Navy Fighter Weapons School, also known as Top Gun. Wonder if he ran into Pretty Boy there. In April 1972, Soyan transitioned with the squadron to the F-4J with Air Wing 8 aboard the USS America. Originally slated for a Mediterranean cruise when the North Vietnamese Army crossed the DMZ on the Easter Offensive of 1972, only two ships were ready for immediate deployment to the Gulf of Tonkin, the Sarasota and America. The carriers first operated in the linebacker air campaign out of Dixie Station, off the South Vietnamese coast, involved with close air support missions for ground troops, along with direct attack on NVA troops and anti-aircraft emplacements below the DMZ. After a successful bombing mission on their very first flight and returning for recovery, better known as landing, they were given the okay to do a low pass along the port side of the carrier. Soyan related, This is an event where an aircraft flew from stern to bow at deck level. We wanted it to be spectacular, so we were moving at a high rate of speed, but we had not noticed that our velocity had surpassed the speed of sound. 
We were supersonic, only a few feet from the deck. Apparently, the ensuing sonic boom knocked dishes in the mess area three feet off the table, while earning the offenders a 24-hour grounding. I cannot imagine that they grounded two of their top pilots right in the middle of a big battle over there against North Vietnam. Next, they moved to Yankee Station and the far more intense skies over North Vietnam. The F-4s flew armed reconnaissance in pairs, provided fighter escort for photo recon missions, and served as bombers for or provided security for large alpha strikes, bombing missions involving as many as 70 aircraft. Being shot down here probably meant you weren't going to make the prom that year, so Yin wrote. No kidding. On one particular mission, he and another pilot by the name of Jay were the number three and number four of a four-plane division led by the CO and his RIO. The mission brief was to approach the North Vietnamese coast, then split into two-plane sections, the CO leading his on its task and Richard and Jay leading theirs to an orbit point off the coast looking for MiGs. However, don't you hate it when this happens? Due to a snafu in communications from the controller, the three and four planes were erroneously vectored inland and suddenly found themselves under attack over a large city. Anti-aircraft guns were using us for target practice and a surface-to-air missile exploded between our two aircraft. We then headed feet wet out over the Gulf, he wrote. Upon their return... Fleet Command wanted to know what the hell two of their F-4s were doing flying in circles over Nam Den like a carnival shooting gallery target. As it turned out, the Red Crown controller had inadvertently typed an O instead of a Q into his computer, thereby sending us to an orbit point over one of the largest cities in North Vietnam. I think that's one of those occasions where you question the orders that come down on a computer. In November, the annual bombing halts took place to give the North Vietnamese time to talk. When the air war resumed on steroids on December the 18th, 1972, Linebacker 2 had B-52s bombing targets around Hanoi for the first time. I bet that shook them up when those arc lights began to roll through town. The F-74 F-4 struck targets near the coast and provided security for the carrier and other carrier aircraft, explained Scullion. The squadron eventually returned to NAS Oceana, and I returned to my civilian life in May of 1973. Scullion had lived in Montana since 1977, except for two years in Texas. Now get this resume. He has served as a policeman in Houston. He spent 33 years as a college math professor, along with 16 years with the criminal justice system as a police firearms instructor. That's what I call using your talents to help your community. Back to the story. The father of two, Richard and his second wife, Beth, retired to Helena in 2012. Their bucket list accomplishments include traveling the world together. Scullion's exploits in an F-4 garnered seven air medals and an MCM with Combat V. This is the part I like when Richard said this. My proudest moment came when in my final officer's evaluation report, My CO acknowledged my contribution as electronics, warfare, and RIO training officer to the squadron's success and not losing a single aircraft in combat. All I can say to that is, hear, hear, Richard. You obviously did a great job over there to not lose any aircraft in combat. That was a great thing. Richard Scullion, I hereby issue you an official Vietnam Veteran News Podcast Salute for your service to your country, both in Vietnam and back home in Texas and Montana. Thank you so much for your service. I wish you the best. That is my opinion, and I am sticking to it. 
This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1869 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for coming to listen to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more that will be coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News. How about that? Ain't that a mess?